just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna. I just wanna thank you, cause everything you made is so Joining me this Sabbath day, we've got a great month ahead full of all the fun and excitement you can imagine. This month is all about creativity. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you are made in God's image. I know that each of you can do some pretty incredible things, but the reason you're capable of such amazing feats is simple. It's because you're made in God's image. The same God who made this and this and even this, that same God made you. Everything good in us is a reflection of the great God who made us, the one who made everything. Check out our memory verse for this month, Psalms 145 verse three. Take it away, Ivan. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Psalm 145 verse three. Thanks, Ivan, that was great. It's impossible for us to fully understand God's greatness. It's impossible for us to even explain how wonderful he is. You might say he's mm, indescribable. In other words, God's creativity has no limits. There is literally nothing God can't do. We know God is indescribable because we can see the amazing world he made. Let's begin by backing up all the way to the very beginning. Open your Bibles to Genesis 1, verses 1 through 2, and read along with me. I'm reading from the New Life Version. All right. In the beginning, God made from nothing the heavens and the earth. The earth was an empty waste, and darkness was over the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was moving over the top of the waters. Did you catch that? The earth had no shape. It was just emptiness. But things were about to change because God said, let there be light. And you can't have light without what? That's right, darkness. Light and dark, that was day one. But there was much more to come, so much more, because day two was coming and that meant the sky and water. God divided the vast endless sky from the deep open waters and day two was done. Day three dawned. God looked out and declared this. So open your Bibles to Genesis 1 verse 9 and read along with me. Then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered into one place. Let the dry land be seen. And it was so. And that's what happened. God said the dry ground would be called land. And he said that the water that was gathered together would be called seas. Before moving on, God looked at what he had done. It was good, but God wasn't done yet, not even close. Day four was going to bring some epic beauty to his creation because on that day, God created the sun, the moon, and the stars. God set in motion all the huge, massive ways that our universe works. This was an important day in God's creation, and once again, he took notice. This was good. Listen to what God said as day five began. Open your Bibles to Genesis 1, verses 20 through 21, and read along with me. 
Then God said, Let the waters be full of living things. Let birds fly above the earth in the open space of the heavens. God made the big animals that live in the sea and every living thing that moves through the waters by its kind and every winged bird after its kind. And God saw that it was good. So God created the great sea creatures. He created every kind of living thing that fills the seas and moves about in them. He created every kind of bird that flies. <sighs> yes, day five brought the first living creatures, fish and birds. As you might guess, this was just the beginning of the fun because God's creativity was about to explode with color and shape and size and sound as he created animal after animal after animal after animal. After animal blah, blah, blah. On the sixth day, let's read what he made on the sixth day. Open your Bibles to Genesis 1, verses 24 through 25. Then God said, Let the earth bring into being living things after their kind, cattle and things that move upon the ground, and wild animals of the earth after their kind. And it was so. God made every kind of wild animal. He made every kind of livestock, like horses and cows and sheep. He made every kind of creature that moves along the ground. Whoosh. And as he had done on the days before, God stopped to appreciate what he had created. He saw that it was good. But hold on to your hats because the best was yet to come. For the grand finale, God created people. Listen to how God described his most prized creation. Open your Bibles to Genesis 1 verses 27. 1 verse 27. And God made man in his own likeness. In the likeness of God, he made him. He made both male and female. Whoosh. Yes, God got down in the dirt and shaped the very first man and woman, Adam and Eve. Then God blessed Adam and Eve. This is what he said to them. Let's read verse 28. And God wanted good to come to them, saying, Give birth to many. Grow in number. Fill the earth and rule over it. Rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And then just like that, God was finished. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Take a look at all the things that God has made. He made everything. And remember, he started from nothing, absolutely nothing, from emptiness. God created everything, everything we know, everything we see, everything we love. God can do anything. He created the entire world and the entire universe from nothing. His creativity has no end. From the smallest insect to the tallest mammal, from the highest mountaintop to the tiniest pebble, there's no limit to God's creativity. Let's take a minute to thank God for creating this beautiful world and for creating us. Dear God, thank you for all that you've made for us. From the tiniest pebble to the tallest mountain to all the animals and to even creating us, we thank you for your creativity and we thank you for giving us your creativity. Help us to always trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. It's amazing to think of how creative God really is. He thought of sloths and eagles, glaciers and deserts, strawberries and chocolate, not to mention the vast universe that we've only just started to understand. But there's one part of God's creation that he valued more than anything else. Listen to this part again. I'm reading from Genesis 1 verse 27. And God made man in his own likeness. In the likeness of God, he made him. He created us to be just like him. He created us in his image. Everything that's good in us comes from him. There's no limit to his creativity. And if we pay attention, we can see his creativity at work inside of us. And remember, God didn't just create us. He wants a relationship with each one of us. That's why he sent his son, Jesus, to be our savior. God wants a relationship with you, which is why he even created you. God is indescribable, but we can get to know him because we can see all the amazing things he made. And he made a lot. There's no limit to God's creativity. So take time to look around at all the things God has created and thank God for it all. As you pay attention to God's creativity, you'll start to notice the creativity God gave you too. I'll see you guys next Sabbath. Bye. Thank you. 
Hello, I'm John, and welcome back to The Joy of Sculpting, where we take beautiful things and make even more beautiful things out of them. Let's take this sculpture of my co-host, Brandon. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? So lifelike, his eyes, his hair. The detail really is marvelous. But what if we could make something new out of it? Let's see. Let's take a, a little bit of Brandon's hair off, like this. And we can just put that there. Oh, that's nice. Kind of squishy. And what do we have here? Oh, look. It's Brandon's little brain. Little brain. We'll put that right, right here very carefully. And what if his ears can go here? There you go. Now let's take Brandon's happy eyes. And we can put those eyes, put them right here. Look at those wonderful eyes. <laughs> Looking right back at you. <laughs> what do these eyes seem? I don't know. Just put those mm, right there. Now, what can we make with what's left? I think I have an idea. What if we make an edge right there? Yeah, yeah, and an edge right here, uh-huh, well that's nice. How about here? Oh, that's nice. Or how about here? Hey, I'm starting to see something. <laughs> there we go. Let's, do, let's just use the, the board for extra pressure. Isn't that beautiful? It's a brick. You could build a big, beautiful house out of this brick. That's how strong it is. Hey, John, have you seen my self-sculpture? I've been looking for it. How nice. Hello everyone, I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and welcome to The So and So Show. Well done, high yeah. five. Oh, that was close. I'll get it, I'll figure it out one day. Sure. So what is all this stuff that you have? Oh, oh I'm coming up with some uh, a new super mutants for a new comic book I'm creating. Oh, well, that sounds fun. What? How do you come up with your new mutants? Well, I have a jar of heads. Okay. A jar of creature buddies. And a jar of superpowers. Oh, and you what? Do you just what? Draw them out? Sure, sure. I'll show you. I'll show you. Watch this. Um, oh, I got a horse head. <laughs> All right. And I'll just take this one. Uh, oh, T Rex body. Look at cool, that. Cool, cool. And a superpower is static electricity. Oh, static electricity. Huh. Yeah. Not everyone can leap over tall buildings on a single bound, Brandon. Oh, uh, well, that's true, I guess. There you go. <laughs> I think we'll call this guy Sir Neighborly the Spokosaurus Rex. <laughs> I think I can make this more interesting. <gasps> Explain how! All right. Mutant Melee. What am I looking at? Hey, that's me! Uh, no, that's your avatar. <gasps> Except now you're... Sir Neighborly. The Sparkosaurus Rex, superpower, static electricity. Versus Panda King, superpower, interpretive bamboo. Ready? Melee! <laughs> it's working! Static electricity! No! Ow. Ow! My turn. What are you doing? Music! Round two. All right, who am I gonna be this time? How about? Captain Fish Breath. Superpower, uh, Fish Breath. 
versus Bat Boy. Superpower can fly. As long as he doesn't realize he's in the air. What does he mean I can only fly unless I realize I'm in the air? Ready? Melee. Ah! I'm flying! Oh, no! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Ow! This is a video game! I shouldn't be able to smell it! <laughs> oh, that's terrible! Winner! Oh, it still stinks. Uh, get these things off me. Yeah, that does stink. Uh, great, I'm gonna have to do laundry. Oh, or maybe burn them. Wait, before you do that, it's Bible story time with Kelly. Hey, everybody. What's up, Kellen? Not much. Say, what do you got there? Uh, laundry from our game of Mutant Melee. Cool. Do you mind if I use it for the story? Oh, sure thing. Thanks. Our story starts with the very first verse of the very first chapter of the very first book of the Bible. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth didn't have any shape. There was darkness over the surface of the waves. The Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good. He separated the light from the darkness and called the light day and the darkness night. How's that for a beginning? And that was just day one. On the second day, God made the sky. God said, let there be a huge space between the waters. And that's exactly what happened. And God called the huge space sky. That was day two. But it was the next day when God's creativity really took root. God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into one place. Let the dry ground appear. God called the dry ground land. Then God said, let the land produce plants and trees and plants and flowers sprung out of the ground and God saw that it was good. That closes the book on day three, but God wasn't finished. He had a whole sky to fill. God said, let there be lights in the huge space of the sky. And so the stars were created. And then God made the moon to rule over the night. He made the sun to rule over the day, and God saw that it was good. Day four, boom, sun, moon, and stars. Without them, we wouldn't know what time of day it was. Think about that. Okay, stop thinking. Things are about to get wild. God said, let the seas be filled with living things. So God created every kind of living thing that fills the oceans. And God said, let birds fly above the earth across the huge space of the sky. And then God created every kind of bird that flies. And God saw that it was good. That was the fifth day, but it was the sixth day when God made his masterpiece. And I'm not talking about the platypus. God said, let the land produce every kind of animal, cows, horses, chickens, bugs, snakes, mice, phrenosasauruses, orangutans, platypi, and it was all good. And then God said, wait for it, let us make human beings. Watch out world. Here we come. So God created human beings in his own likeness. He created them as male and female. And God told them to take care of the earth and all that was in it. This was day six. On the seventh day, God rested from all his work. But before he did that, he took a good look at everything he had created. And he saw that it was very good. The end. 
That was incredible. It really is incredible when you think about all the things God created. I mean, whether it's a huge planet in space or a tiny little eyelash, right? Oh! Ow. Make a wish. No, you are so weird. What? Get that away from me. Yeah. There's really no limit to God's creativity. You can find it anywhere. I found it sitting right next to me. Aww. Thanks for the story, Kellen. You got it. See you guys next time. Later. See ya. What a great story. Yeah, I Love loved it. how my gym shorts turned into a orangutan. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I took from the story, too. Yeah. Reveal the question. Awesome. Where do you see God's creativity? Yeah, do you see it in a stream flowing through the woods? Or in a star that's over 100 miles away? Yes, except stars are like millions of miles away, John. So, over 100, right? Right. Talk about it with each other. Where do you see God's creativity? And we will see you next time on The So-and-So -so -so Show. Show. It's right there. You can read it. It's in gold. <laughs>